Imagine you need a mirror with a certain shape. It may not happen to everyone or even very often, but sometimes, sometimes you just want to have a mirror. Usually you can do that by turning and polishing a chunk of metal on a lathe until it is so smooth that the metal works like a mirror. Alternatively, you can achieve a mirror surface by grinding a piece of glass or coating plastic in a vacuum chamber. All of that is pretty slow and expensive. Finding the right shape for your application by trial and error is probably the worst when getting it wrong and starting over costs you almost a kidney. So, how can we do a bit of rapid prototyping for complex mirror shapes? Spoiler, with laminated metallized plastic sheets and a bit of controlled bending or thermoforming. But first, let's get a shape. In general, there are three different types of shapes. Flat planes, single curved surfaces such as bent or curved geometries, that's what you can do with a sheet of paper without tearing it, and double curved surfaces, that's the holy grail. The material I use is laminated and metallized polystyrene. Since there is already a mirror surface on the material, we don't need to coat it in a second step. And as a thermoplastic, it's easily deformable and at room temperature pretty stiff to keep its shape. But before I settled on polystyrene, I did a quick test of different mirror-like materials. Coated acrylic glass, metallized polystyrene, PVC foil with an aluminum layer, and Rust-Oleum mirror spray on a PTG sheet. Comparing this works pretty easy by bouncing light against different mirror materials onto a sheet of paper. My reference material is a silver coated glass mirror. That's pretty standard stuff and the highest quality mirror you'll find in your household probably. The reflection of the projected test pattern is already looking pretty good, but if we subtract the image from the reference mirror image, we see just the differences, so all the tiny imperfections and errors. We can see that the acrylic glass looks quite okay, but has a few tears or cracks in the reflection surface. The laminated polystyrene causes a bit of color bending and has some issues, but these are well distributed amongst the whole surface and not as local as the acrylic glass. The PVC foil is just straight up garbage and the mirror spray is even worse. So I guess we've got a winner. The laminated polystyrene is something you can usually get at half a millimeter or one millimeter thickness pretty much everywhere around the world. Sometimes in small arts and crafts shops, sometimes online. One valid alternative is vinyl, which may be easier to get in some countries. If you go thinner, your mirror gets imprecise. If you go thicker, you will have a hard time deforming the material. So around one millimeter is pretty much perfect. So back to the mirror. You can model it in any CAD program. I'm using Fusion 360 here. Since I know that I will be using one millimeter thick polystyrene sheets, I can treat my part like a sheet metal object and use fusion spans and joints for getting exactly the right angles and geometries for a bent mirror. When I'm done, I am exporting tool paths for a CNC milling operation and cuts apart from the polystyrene sheet. I can spare me a lot of frustration by using a 90 degree chamfering end mill to pre-carve the bending lines. Less hassle, more precision. If you don't have a CNC handy, print a drawing on a sheet of paper and cut it manually with a hobby knife. Works totally okay and is slightly less cool, but it works of course. I'm screwing the mirror to a 3D printed part that both holds the mirror for my prototype, but also aligns it perfectly. If the mirror is really flat, like more flat than what I'm doing right here, it's pretty easy to achieve really tight tolerances. Anyway, but wait a sec, how do you know your geometry makes sense at all? Simulating mirrors is hard. Luckily, there's a lot of software around. Hmm. Uh, maybe not. Well, at least I can pay with PayPal. On top of that, that it's usually only 2D, so you can only work on a cross section. But there is an alternative which is a bit more accessible. Hi Blender. 
We can just ray trace a whole 3D model and get a pretty good feeling for the field of view or distortion we get with a certain geometry. This works both for simulated cameras as well as lights or projectors we want to bounce off the mirror. But before we can do that we need to install LuxCore, a slightly more fancy rendering engine which handles ray tracing in both directions. Let's get started. We need to export our model from Fusion as STL files. It's clever to export everything, non-mirror as a single file and the mirror as a separate second file. It's important that you export at least the mirror STL with the highest quality settings in Fusion, because the larger the single polygons, the larger the error in the reflected image. Import everything in Blender and set up the scene. We need to enable the LookScore rendering engine, set it to bidirectional and place a spotlight which acts as a projector. Last step, set an image as a texture for the spotlight and the cone width. For our mirror we need to set the material properties of the object to the mirror preset that takes care of all the nasty stuff. And if you set viewport shading to render preview, you're done. If you want to use a camera instead of a projector, just place a camera. Make sure that you've got the right settings for your actual physical camera on the object and you're good to go. Okay, cool, but how do we actually manufacture mirrors which are slightly more complicated than bent or curved mirrors? That's the time for vacuum forming. For vacuum forming we just need a few basic tools. A heat gun, a vacuum fixture, something heat resistant to hold the sheets and our 3D printed mold. I'm using an improvised vacuum former here which is just a piece of MDF with a few holes and a 3D printed box with a vacuum cleaner adapter. The sheet holder are aluminum profiles and some office supply document clamps. Vacuum forming is pretty easy and the most basic of all rapid prototyping techniques. The plastic in the sheet holder deforms when heated. We just place an object that acts as a mold on a surface that lets air pass. We heat the plastic, press it on the mold and start the vacuum. The atmosphere presses down the sheet in every nook and cranny while rapidly cooling the plastic. Cut away the excess plastic and we got a pretty okay copy. I'm using slightly undersized screw holes in the mold so I can drill a small hole in the mirror after vacuum forming to fit a screw and permanently fix the mirror to the plastic. Glue would probably do the job as well but Screw holes make it easier for air to escape as well, so vacuum forming is a bit easier. However, there are a few things you should keep in mind. For example, use really low layer heights for printing, otherwise molten plastic will fill the gaps and ripples or infill structures will be visible in the mirror. And do not use PLA. PTG works okay-ish with a few extra parameters and anything that's more heat tolerant works even better. In any case, if your plastic sheet transfers too much heat into the printed mold, it's game over, so do not overheat the sheet. Generally, the metallized polystyrene can handle a bit of stretch, but at some point it will rip. In most cases, however, that should not be an issue. Okay, cool, but what can I do with that stuff? Well, I created a small camera and mirror housing that allows me to see a table surface on both sides of the camera. I can simply take my CAD model and import it in Blender. Blender renders the camera view with the correct positions and focal length and I can see what the camera would see before I even start to build the thing. In the end, the actual camera image matches pretty perfectly with my rendering. Another thing which I build is a Pico projector that projects against a rotation symmetric mirror to have something like a circular projection on a table. Creating this mirror and finding the right curvature would have been a total pain in the ass otherwise. But given the mirror, I can at least project a 50 cm circle on the table. So how can you use the stuff? 
all necessary links are in the description and everything else should have been in the video. So have fun.